Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, I want to show you how to solve a rational inequality. So remember, that comes from taking a rational expression and packaging it up with an inequality. Now you'll notice that this process is definitely different from solving a rational equality, so different from those equations. Uh, let's look at some uh, of tips on how we can actually go through the solving process. So when we have a rational inequality, the very first thing that we want to do is actually get everything over onto one side. This is so that it's in relation to zero. Next, we need to combine everything into a single fraction. This will really help us find our critical values. Step three and four is all about finding those critical values. You want to know where the top is equal to zero and where the bottom is equal to zero. Now once we have those critical values from, say, step 3 and 4, then we'll go ahead and use a table to start testing numbers around those values. And what we're looking for is, you know, is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative around those values? Once we have all of the information about the signs, we'll write the intervals that satisfy the inequality. So if we have something like less than 0, we'll grab the negative intervals. If we have something that's greater than 0, uh, we will grab the positive intervals. All right. The very last part of this is we need to check the endpoints of each of these intervals to see whether they need to be included or possibly not included. Okay, so we got a lot of steps to move through. So as I go through both of my examples, uh, look carefully on how I actually go through each and every one of these. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So in the first example, I want to solve a negative 2 divided by a 1 minus x is less than 7. Okay. And I'll start right with step one, and I'll try and get everything over onto one side. So let's go ahead and subtract a seven from both sides. So negative two, one minus x, minus seven is less than zero. Okay, that means that all I need to know now is whether this entire thing is either positive or negative, and you know, we'll find that out in just a bit. All right, so now that everything's over onto one side, we need to combine it into a single fraction. Now that often involves, say, finding a common denominator and putting them together. So we'll imagine this is 7 over 1, then we'll multiply the top and bottom by 1 minus x. Alright, so this one doesn't change, minus, this one will be multiplied by 1 minus x, and on the bottom, 1 minus x. Alright, looking better. Uh, now that they have the same denominator, let's go ahead and put the tops together. So negative 2 minus a 7, 1 minus x, all over 1 minus x. All right, looking great. Uh, we need to do a little bit more simplifying. Let's go ahead and distribute our negative 7 in. Let's see what we have. So negative 2 minus a 7 plus a 7x. Watch those signs. All right, almost done combining as much as we can. Uh, now let's go ahead and continue our work up here. So I have a negative two and a negative seven. That would be a negative nine. I have a positive seven X all over one minus X. So now that we have it into a single fraction, I need to start drawing out my critical values. We'll first figure out where the top is equal to zero and where the bottom is equal to zero, okay? Let's do the top. Where is the top equal to zero? We can literally just grab the top of our rational here and set it equal to zero and solve directly. So let's see, solving this, I'd move the nine to the other side and then divide everything by seven. Oops, should be a seven. There we go. Okay, so we will take this as one of our critical values. Now let's find out where the bottom is equal to zero. And again, you can literally just grab the bottom part, set it equal to zero, and solve directly. Okay, so if I move the x to the other side, 1 is equal to x. So it's around these two values that I want to test things out. So things that are, say, less than 1, greater than 1, less than 9 sevenths, greater than uh, 9 sevenths, that's what I need to know about. 
So let's take these and put them into a table. So I've already started to set up that table. And here's some things that you want to make sure you do when setting this up. The top part of this table, you want to treat like a number line. You want to put those critical values on that number line from smallest to largest. So of my values, the smaller one is at 1. And the larger one is at 9 sevenths. Okay. And what we'll be testing uh, is values around each of these. And we'll be testing them into, say, the top and bottom parts of our uh, expression over here. So we'll be testing them into negative 9 plus 7x. And we'll be testing them to 1 minus x. And what we're really looking for is, you know, is the result positive or negative? Uh, so let's just start off by picking values around each of these. So I need something that is less than 1. Uh, let's use a test value of like 0. Something between 1 and 9 sevenths. Uh, not a whole lot in there, but uh, let's go ahead and grab 8 sevenths. Something larger than 9 sevenths. Do. So it's those green values that we'll be plugging into here. All right, let's see what we get. So if I was to take a 0 and plug it into my x for the top part, I'd have a negative 9 plus a 0, and the result is a negative value. Well, what would happen if I took an 8 sevenths and I plugged it in there? Well, that'd be a negative 9 plus 8, and the result is still negative. All right, and then one more. If I was to take 2 and plug it in here, that'd be a negative 9 plus 14, and that would be positive. Okay, so now I, I'm keeping track of the sign of what's happening to that top part. Now let's do the same for the bottom part. Okay, so putting in a 0 for x, I'd have 1 minus 0. That'd be positive. Uh, 1 minus 8 sevenths, so 8 sevenths is just a hair larger than 1. So 1 minus something just a little bit bigger than 1 would be negative. And 2 minus 1 would be negative. Okay, now that I know the sign of each of the pieces, uh, I can see that in my expression they're being divided. So think, in this first interval I'll have a negative divided by a positive, the result will be negative. In that middle interval, I'll have a negative divided by a negative, so the result there will be positive. And on the last interval, a positive divided by a negative, the result is negative. So now I know exactly what the rational expression is doing on every single one of my intervals. So which ones do we want? Well, it all depends on the direction of our inequality. Notice how up here, when we uh, put things together and got everything to one side, we have less than zero. Less than zero is our indication that we want negative values. So let's go ahead and write down the intervals that involve those negative values. So we got two of them, looks like one here and one here. This first interval involves all the numbers, say from negative infinity all the way up to one. And this other interval that gives us a negative is from 9 sevenths all the way up to infinity. Okay, now we're on to the very last step. I need to check all of my endpoints to see which ones I should include, which ones I should not include. Anytime we're dealing with, say, infinity or negative infinity, those will never be included, so we'll use a parentheses to show that. All right? Should I include the 1? Well, no, because it makes the bottom 0 will never include any values that make the bottom zero. And how about 9 sevenths? If I was to use that in the original, uh, I would get a zero in the top, and this would actually just be zero less than zero. Well, in this case, we're dealing with a strict inequality, uh, so I don't even want to include places where it's equal to zero. So we won't include that one either. So my solution interval is everything from negative infinity up to one, or from 9 sevenths up to infinity. And then this one's done. So you can see there is a lot of work in here, uh, but it is manageable with the table as long as you're keeping track of all the signs. Let's do one more example just to make sure you have this process down. And this one will be a little bit bigger. All right. We want to solve 5 divided by x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 4 over x minus 2. All right. Let's start off uh, just like we did before. Let's get everything onto one side. So I have 5 x minus 3 minus a 4 x minus 2. 
So we want to know greater than or equal to zero now. All right, like before, we're going to put these together, but we need a common denominator first. I'll multiply this rational on the top and bottom by an x minus two, and this one on the top and bottom by an x minus three. So five x minus two all over. So now I have an x minus three and an x minus two on the bottom, minus. And then we'll do the other one, x minus three. So that's going on the top and on the bottom, and now we can see that both of our denominators are exactly the same. Okay, so things are looking good. Uh, now let's go ahead and just put the tops together. So five, x minus two minus four, x minus three, and all of this is over the same denominator, x minus three, x minus two. Okay, looking pretty good. We are still greater than or equal to zero. We just need to simplify the top of this just a little bit more so we can, can continue on. So we're gonna distribute in our five and we'll distribute in this negative four. So five X minus 10 minus four X plus 12 all over X minus three X minus two greater than or equal to zero. Okay, a lot of stuff lying around in here. Let's go ahead and continue the rest of our work way up here. Uh, so combining a five X and a minus four X would give me a single X. Negative 10 plus 12 would be a positive two. So that would completely simplify the top. And the bottom, well, we're just gonna leave that factored, okay? It'll actually make finding the critical values from the bottom a little bit easier. Okay, so we've shifted everything over to one side, made it into a single fraction. Now let's find out where the top and the bottom are equal to zero. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the top part of this. Set it equal to zero, solve directly. And it looks like one of our values is at a negative two. So we'll hold on to that. Now, where's the bottom equal to zero? Well, I actually have two factors in the bottom that I need to consider. So we can take each of those. So x minus three, where is it equal to zero? Well, when x equals three. And how about x minus two, where is that equal to zero? Well, when x equals two. So this one, I end up with a few critical values and we'll need to check around every single one of those, okay? But make sure you got them all. So you got one of them from the top and a couple from the bottom. All right, let's take these values and put them into our table. Remember that as you're putting these values into the table, write them from the smallest value you found to the largest. So our values are at negative two, two, and three. And if you want, you can go ahead and write down the values we'll be testing around these. So something less than a negative two, you could imagine maybe a negative three. Something between a negative two and two, zero works pretty good. Something between two and three, maybe two and a half. Something larger than three, maybe a four. All right, so each of these needs to be tested into all of the, the parts of our rational. So we'll test things into our x plus two part, our x minus three part, and our x minus two part. All right, now one by one, let's go ahead and start plugging these in. So what happens if I take a negative two and I put it, I mean a, a negative three and I put it into x plus two? Well, negative three plus two would give me a negative value. All right, moving on. If I put a zero in there, zero plus two would be positive. Keep going, two and a half plus two, still positive. Four plus two, still positive, positive six. Okay, so that part is done. Now let's go ahead and test out uh, a negative three into here. So negative three minus three, negative. Zero minus three would be negative three. Two and a half minus three, mm, it's close, but it's still negative. 
And last, a 4 minus a 3 would be a positive 1. So, positive. Okay, one last piece to check. Let's see what it's doing. So, negative 3 minus 2 would be a negative 5. 0 minus 2 would be a negative 2. 2 and a half minus 2 would give us a positive 1 half. So, make sure that part is positive. And last, 4 minus 2, positive 2. So now that we know what each individual piece is doing on each interval, now we need to imagine putting all of these pieces together for our you know, entire rational here. So as we're putting these together, we're going to do this column by column. So in this first interval, I'm imagining a negative value being divided by a negative times a negative. So something like this, a negative being divided by a negative times a negative. Now, if you notice, on the bottom, when you multiply two negatives together, they actually become positive. So what's happening there on the first interval is I have a negative divided by a positive. The result is negative. Let's scratch out our work so we don't you know, confuse it with the rest. Uh, on this next one, I'll have a positive divided by a negative times a negative. So that will reduce to a positive divided by a positive. That interval, positive. Moving on. Uh, positive divided by a negative times a positive, negative. And for our last one, everything's positive, so combining it, it better be positive. All right, it's looking pretty good so far. Almost there. Now we need to figure out, should we take the positive intervals or the negative intervals? Well, in this one, after we combine things, we have greater than or equal to zero. That's our clue that we want our positive intervals things greater than zero. Let's see, I have this interval between negative two and two, and I have this interval from three all the way up to infinity. So let's first begin by just writing those intervals down. So from negative two up to two, and from three to infinity. All right, now we are almost done. We have to figure out which of these endpoints should be included, and which ones should not be included. Remember, anytime you're dealing with infinity, don't include it. All right, now let's check these one by one. Should I include the negative two? Well, if I was to use a negative two in the original, that would make the top equal to zero. And if the top of my fraction was equal to zero, it'd make the entire fraction equal to zero. So I'd have zero greater than or equal to zero. And it is okay if it's equal to zero. That's what uh, my little or equals two is telling me. So we will include the negative two. All right, should we include the positive two? Well, this came from the bottom equaling zero. And we never want a zero on the bottom, so we will not include the two. Okay, should we include the three? Well, the answer is no, for the same reason. We do not want a zero on the bottom, so we cannot include the three. Okay, so now we have uh, both of our solution intervals. Uh, we want all values between a negative two inclusive up to two or from three to infinity. All right, so if you follow these steps very carefully, uh, you should be able to solve all of your rational inequalities just fine. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.